And on the line with me patiently hanging on is Jason Gray from Wyoming Liberty Group. We're here to talk about the Telecommunications Act. How are you on this cold September? I'm doing well. How are you, Glenn? Yeah, I'm wearing a coat for the first time. That's how I am. I just, I just <laughs> wanted to here. wait another month. That's all I wanted. <laughs> you wrote a very interesting article that I was reading this morning, which is why I asked you to come on. Could you explain to people what you were writing about? Because it's kind of detailed. It, it, it is a very detailed subject, but it's, it's interesting because the Wyoming Telecommunications Act is, is scheduled to sunset. And so the Corporations Committee is, is in the process of hearing people out as they decide what they're going to do and when the act, so to deal with the act sunset, and whether they're going to let, let the act just go away, which is highly unlikely, or if they're going to just renew it, or if they're going to, do it, if they're going to rewrite the, the legislation all, all together. And the interesting thing is that the discussion about Wyoming telecommunications regulation has very little to do with actual regulation. Uh, no, nobody in the committee or, or any of the interested parties that are participating in these hearings spends a lot of time talking about what regulation might be necessary in order to maintain a competitive environment or any of that sort of thing in, term, in terms of telephone well, service. The, the discussion, instead of focusing on you know what, how, how to regulate the industry as they look at the sunset and expiration of, of the current act, has been collection and redistribution of money. Mm. Funny enough, it has very little to do with the actual regulation of the telephone industry because, as you can imagine, that's becoming less and less of a concern. Right. So when you look at your your home telephone bill or your cell phone bill, you might notice that there's federal and state fees that are collect- collected and one of them is for the Wyoming Universal Service Fund. Mm-hmm. And that provides for people that are low income or for people who live in areas that it's really expensive to run a telephone line to, provides a subsidy to keep their phone bill low, which is paid for by everyone else in the state, whether they have that, that phone company or not. And some of the companies that, that are lobbying for the uh, the current fund to continue on in existence in either its current form or in a slightly modified form in terms of calculation depend heavily on mostly federal dollars. Like they can have up to around 50% of their revenue from the Universal Service Fund. But the federal money is going away. Right. It, it's, going to, it's going to eventually go towards broadband. We don't know if it's going to be in the next year or two or exactly how fast it's going to happen. But the the federal government is focused on getting broadband to everyone. All right, two questions so on that real quick. One, okay. is this part of Governor Meade's push for broadband lately? Does it relate to that? Is that why he's doing it, this? No, no, it's, it, that's, a, that's a separate thing. This is, okay. When I'm talking about broadband, it's actually the, the federal government. Right. With their, uh, uh, they, tra- they changed the federal fund from a universal service fund to the Connect America fund. And they're trying to get broadband out to basically every home in America is their goal. Obviously, they're going to sell for something less than 100%. Um, but as they do that, the telephone companies that do not provide broadband uh, Internet access will not receive any of those federal funds. Right. And as it's currently constructed, that means that the Wyoming fund will have to step up, which means they'll have to charge you more they, they won't call it's not called a tax it's called a fee of but it, the fee will go up and you'll have to pay it and it's mandated by the government so it's essentially a tax well see this that, and, that was my second question do the people of wyoming end up getting stuck with the bill and i look at that i'm not trying to change subjects here but the same thing yeah. as medicaid expansion where the federal government promises us a bunch of money then eventually the money doesn't arrive and we're stuck with the bill right just like you know, federal highway funds. Yeah. That's the, that's generally the way the federal government works. Is they'll they'll throw a lot of money at you at first to get to get whatever program it is instituted and ramped up. But then once people become accustomed to it, the federal dollars are pulled away. They're sent to something else, and the state has to pick up the slack. And that's a, you know it's something you've seen repeated over and over again. And that's what's going to happen with the the universal service funds as far as telephone services is concerned. So the state will have. As it's currently written, the state would have to kick in 
basically to match what the federal government has taken away from those companies in order to uh, keep the phone prices, the phone service prices down for the people that, that are currently served by those companies. Okay, now, and um, I'm asking for a bit of opinion and also kind of playing devil's advocate with you here, but it looks to me that with today's modern technology, it is less and less necessary for government at all. I don't think they should ever have been involved in it at all in the first place. But anyway, really not important for them to be involved in telephone or Internet or any such thing. Because frankly, doesn't the technology today between cell phone towers and satellites change the landscape? Oh, exactly. And the, the current law was written in 1995, which doesn't seem like all that long ago. But you got to remember, that's back when you know, Motorola was really pushing the edge with, with flip phones and that sort of thing. And you know, phones have come a long way since then. The cellular coverage has come a long way since then. Uh, back then, there were, there were 40 million, roughly, uh, wireless phone numbers issued throughout the entire country, which sounds like a lot, except now we have well over 300 numbers. We actually have more wireless phone numbers than we have people in this country. Mm -hmm. So enough people have multiple phones that we have more the, the more phone numbers, more wireless phone numbers than people. <laughs> well, real quick here, we just got about a, uh, about a minute to wrap this up. I was curious, where do you think our legislator and our governor is going to end up going on this? Because now, I mean, now that it's laid out and, and they're going to have to make a move on it, I don't see them sunsetting the bill, which is where you began. Right. It, we, we would like to see them sunset, but we also realize that that's probably not what going to happen. Uh, and, and even if the war is sunset, it wouldn't, it wouldn't just go away because there are certain administrative things that would still need to happen. The companies would still need to register with the state in order to comply with federal regulations. And that's what we'd like to see. But what we don't want to see is what the Public Service Commission is pushing for and what several of the companies are pushing for is that uh, they just extend the sunset of the act because that's easier yeah. and they don't know what's going to happen with telecommunications. So instead of trying to come up with something better, just stick with what we did in 1995. Probably what's going to happen. Hey, as this develops, can I get you back on the program to talk about it more? Yes, sir. Not All a problem. Right. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it.